This farm in Fife is plagued by pigeons. I've already had success during the day, but to really get on top of them, we plan a nighttime assault. So the reason I'm wearing a mask tonight, that even though there is no, there's no light here, there is a full moon, but even then it's faint. We're going into the sheds and it's going to be completely black. Is that when I switch the illuminator on to this, uh, to this night sight, I'm going to go and it shines on my face. It does provide some reflection. I do have shockingly white skin. So covering up my hands, covering up my face, anything that's going to be around this screen will just help break up that uh, light so they can't, they won't even know we're there. So that's the plan. So this is the size of the problem. There are literally hundreds of pigeons in here. The mess on the floor is pretty bad. You can just see from the sheer numbers, they have no concern of the fact we're here. No idea we're here. This night site really is an incredible piece of equipment. Look at those. Just zoom out a second here, give you a full picture. Look at that. The barn is full of cattle and we only have the wide centre aisle from which to shoot. reload and I'm bringing a spare magazine. So we've had to reload, we've had to put some more air in the gun. This is intense, it's probably the most insane pigeon control exercise I've ever done in my life. There are simply hundreds and hundreds of pigeons in there and they have absolutely no idea we're here. I've actually taken my face mask off now because even with the light on, on full um, illumination they're not even bothered, they're not even looking at us. So. We've probably got about 50-55 on the deck at the moment. Um, I'm taking body shots mainly, as you'll see from, from the footage a little bit later. Headshots and neck shots on pigeons in the barn like this, they're not, not advisable really. There's plenty of penetration in this 177 sub-12 foot-pound air rifle. If you stick it up near the head and you miss, you're going through an asbestos roof and you're causing damage, and that's not what we're here for. We're here, here to keep these winged menace under control, and we're doing a pretty good job so far. So, loading up, spare magazine, more air, and we're going back for more. The Huntsman and Night Sight combo is incredibly efficient and the birds keep falling. The only problem is having just 10 shots in the magazine. After the latest recharge, I take a position outside the barn. It's another great vantage point, although the cows are getting a little too close for comfort. So, one of these cows is new age hippie type cow because it was just licking the end of my barrel and nearly got itself a piercing so I think what we're going to do now because there's far too much interest at this end of the barn I'm just going to get down and we're going to do another little tour of the inside reload find a new position in the middle of the floor probably seated this time and then we're just going to work our way around the rafters again amazingly I'm now nearing my century 96 97, 98, 99, and 100. 100 feral pigeons. It's my personal record. And I got one in the mag, so one at one for luck. Andy Richardson is a guide with a nose for pigeons, and he certainly delivered the goods tonight. So how did the relationship start with you and the farmer? How did you find this barn? God, myself and this particular farmer used to drink together when we were in our teens. So it's been a 
kind of 30 year friendship. You know, we're in the young farmers together. Yeah. So, so what you're suggesting is, if you go down the pub more often and bump into cool people, you get decent shooting. That's right, yeah. You must tell my wife that. I know. As the night's gone on, we've got bolder and bolder, throwing more and more light around the shed. Now we're going full on. We're going to use a foxing lamp to see just how big a problem these pigeons are. And for my grand finale, I see how many birds I can knock down with my last full magazine. So it's my last 10 shots, my last mag, and Andy's challenged me to see if I can get 10 out of 10. So watch and learn. One. Three, five, seven, nine, ten. Andy says a lot of the fallen birds will be trodden into the cow's bedding, so I start clearing up. Looks like these fellas are getting trodden in already, so I've got a bit of work cleaning up. I've spent about two hours having a whale of time. Now comes the dirty work. Go on then, get on, get on. It was all going so well, when one animal feels I'm invading his personal space. Get on. He looks a little shifty, so I keep an eye on him. <laughs> However, he's too fast for me. The dairy cross ball puts me on the deck and I exit the barn as fast as I can. You're right. You're right. Yep. Behind the camera, David offers some reassuring words. Oh, my chest. Whilst Andy suppresses a laugh. Sure. Uh, I lost I lost an argument with the cow. Oh, no, he ran me. Ran you? Against the wall, yeah. It's okay. You sure he I don't think I broke anything. You sure? Oh. Sit down for a second, just take your breath. I'm winded and we later discover I'm nursing two crack ribs. But the show must go on. Uh. <sighs> right. Do you think I'll be... Explain what happened then. Well, I was uh, just in there trying to gather the pigeons up. These cows look a little bigger than the other ones. And uh, I think uh, there's a few that have been half eaten around there, so I think they've been chewing on them but I lost an argument with a very big beef cow. One like that. In fact, that might be him right there. I'll tell you what, you'll get it. Don't... Oh, yeah. So what a phenomenal night. That has to be one of the greatest night shooting of my entire career. 110 birds on the floor, 10 out of 10 on my last magazine, and that wasn't the only excitement. I even got rammed against the wall by one of those huge pedigree balls in there as I was cleaning up the birds. So a night I'll never forget, but I'll be sore in the morning. Farrells and Harford being hit hard.